our recorded services and then our on, uh, you know, online and then our live stream services now live to hear beautiful preludes from Sung Wan. Sung Wan is going to be leaving us for about two and a half months here. He goes on tour with a wonderful group called the King's Brass where he's the keyboard player. And uh, we will miss these beautiful preludes and you're going to be hearing more about this because he's taken a lot of these preludes, which, by the way, he arranges all himself. Uh, these are not published pieces. He does all the arrangements. And he's going to put this into an album he's making. And I know you're going to be interested in that when that comes out. But for the last time, uh, for a while, let's prepare our hearts for another prelude by Sun Wan.
I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Glenn. I welcome those of you who are joining us in person for worship. I'm welcoming those of you who are live streaming with us right now. I welcome all of you who will join us in the worship video uh, at some other time. We are all one in the Lord. Uh, we'll start by saying together who we are and why we are here. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is to be an amazingly international church where faith is contagious and invitational. There are offering containers in the back of the room, one there, one over there, uh, where you can put your offering on your way out today. We give to God out of gratitude for all that God has blessed us with. Uh, to be honest with you, we fell a little behind in giving in the month of April, so I am asking if you can make May uh, a month of bounty. If you can make that happen, uh, please consider uh, giving an extra gift to our church this month. Um, we are grateful for everything that you do and every gift that you give. You'll also find connection cards on many of the chairs and sanitized pens. It's important to us to know everybody who worships with us. So we ask you to take a moment to fill out the connection card and you can also place that in the offering boxes in the back of the room following service today. Uh, I want to say just one word about the wearing of masks. Let me see the hands of everybody who is tired of wearing a mask. All right, now, now. Now, here's what I want to say about that. I am asking everybody to continue for now to wear your mask when we are together inside in this space. And here's why. It is for the protection. It is for the well-being and comfort of those who have not yet had the opportunity to be vaccinated. For those who, are very, who for various health reasons are not able to be vaccinated, and of course for our children who are not yet eligible to be vaccinated, uh, for the safety of all out of love, I for one, I am willing to continue to wear the mask in here just a little bit longer, and I hope, I pray, I believe that you are as well. I saw a Facebook post in, I think it was a United Methodist clergy group I'm a part of, that I'd simply like to read to you and share with you now. It says, Dear churches, please be gracious with your pastors who are balancing new CDC guidelines with the values of our churches. We are doing the best we can, we promise. Love every single pastor right now. You know, we may not all make the decisions, but we are making them uh, all out of love. So that's what I'm asking you to do for now. Um, our Go Fish topic today is fishing buddies. Fishing buddies. So first question, if you were going to go fishing, who would you want to go with you? Think about that for a moment, and maybe even more to the point today. If you were to invite somebody to church, if you were to share the love of Jesus with somebody, who would you most want them to meet? That's what we're thinking about today. So hold that thought while we say together our Go Fish theme verse. It's from Mark 1, verse 17. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. So here's what you can expect in our time together this morning. I will sing a hymn and a song. Sarah will share a children's message. Who knows? Maybe she's got another fish joke. I figured she did. She will invite kids uh, grade K through 6 to go with her if they wish to children's worship this morning. Uh, we'll hear the scripture and more about fishing buddies. We will pray for another one of our local neighborhood schools, sing a closing song, and I will send you out to fish for people. So now as you are able, please stand and let's join our voices together in worship and praise. In 
In the book of Romans, Paul tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. It's about connection. It's about empathy. It's what the church does best as we live in the shelter of each other. Church of God united to serve one Jesus, 
You bet your bottom sand dollar I have a joke. <laughs> it was coming. Only one more week, friends. I am amazed continually that they do give me a microphone and that they turn it on when I come up. <laughs> Well, that was one of my fishing buddies, but now <laughs> it's, awesome. oh, it's good to be with you all. So um, when I was thinking about what my children's message today and um, what joke I would use, I decided to reel it in a little bit. All right, that's the last one, I promise. <laughs> but today I wanted to share a personal story with you all about our time here at Bethel. As some of you may or may not know, my family came here in 1993. We started attending Bethel. Um, I was married in the sanctuary, and then both of my kids were baptized here. Um, and then in 2003, I became the children's ministry director. And then in 2007, um, I took a job at another church as children's ministry director. And we talked about the change as a family. Um, my kids knew other kids at the, the new church, but um, for Lauren, she loved to perform, and they had a children's choir, so she was all over that. It was a good change for her, but for Brendan, I can't look that way because he's sitting there. <laughs> for Brendan, it was, it was a good change, but he, what I hadn't realized is he had developed this core group of people here at Bethel, his, his fishing buddies, if you will, um, and he... You know, he didn't want to leave them, and I totally get that. So Mike would bring him back once a month or every other Sunday because it was important to Brendan, and it was important to us that he be with his people. Um, this group of kids were always together. You, you may have seen them around. I'm sure you did. He's sitting by a couple of them right now. But um, they did youth group together, and they did sunshine together, and they celebrated milestones, graduations, um, birthdays, in and out of church. They had a group chat going, so they kept together. They celebrated all these milestones together. They did life together, and they still do. We just went to a wedding of one of his Christian buddies, which was weird because <laughs> he's 22, <laughs> but it was great that he still kept us in that mix and that we were still considered one of his, his persons. So um, Bethel was a place where Brendan and we all felt loved, we felt safe, and we felt that we belonged. And isn't that what we all want? That's what life is about, right? Uh, so when I came back to interview for children's ministry director again, I referenced the story of my kids and their experience here at Bethel. Um, and my goal and what I shared with the committee that if the kids feel nothing else here, um, they will know that they're loved, they'll know that they're safe, and they know that they belong. So 
for you watching, um, maybe for the first time, come visit us here at Bethel. We'd love to have you, and um, we hope that you feel at home and you find your fishing buddies here. So I hope you have a great week. And now if the kids will meet me at the back door, um, I'll take you to our time of worship, and then parents will meet you at room 16, which is the room to the left, just as you're exiting the Family Life Center. Have a great week. Our scripture this morning is from Acts 2, 43 through 47. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To all who are looking down, holding on to hearts still wounding. For those who have yet to find it, the place is near where love is moving. Cast off the robes you're wearing, set aside the same names that you've, you've been, been given. given. May this place of rest fold of your journey bind you to hope you will never walk alone in the shelter of each other Set aside the lies that you've, you've been, been living. And may this place of rest in the fold of your journey bind you to hope. We will never walk alone in the shelter. Given us each other, and we will never walk alone. In the shelter of each other, we will never walk alone. We will never in the shelter.
in the shelter of each other. We will never walk alone. Never walk alone. We do have a few guests with us today that I would like to introduce to you. Uh, we have some friends here from Global Community United Methodist Church. Stand up so we can see you. Um, some folks were actually here last Sunday, and somebody had told them we worship at 11, which of course we usually do. So they had the privilege of witnessing the youth planting a, a tree uh, and, and, and stayed for that. And there and. And the tree planting was so impressive that, that they are back today. Uh, Global Community United Methodist Church, is it's very near Hudson and High, uh, and it is an intentionally multicultural, diverse congregation, uh, sort of founded by my colleague Daniel Kim, uh, and Daniel is one of the pastors that I reach out to, and he is mentoring me as we seek to become a more diverse and multicultural congregation here. Uh, Linda Middleberg, our district superintendent, was here. Linda, you still, there's Linda and her husband. They were here for our um, charge conference. Welcome. Uh, and everybody and anybody who is here today, I am just so glad you have joined us. Um, will you bow with me for a moment of prayer? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, may it all be found worthy in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And let all God's people say, Amen. Well, we're now in week four of this Go Fish series. See if I can get my paraphernalia back on. Today's topic uh, is called Fishing Buddies. Fishing Buddies, and not to be outdone by my staff and Sarah, um, I've got a, I can't get that, I've got a fishing joke for you uh, of my own today. Um, it is this, you know, they say, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, right? Teach a man to fish and he'll sit on a boat and drink beer with his buddies all day. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Uh, so uh, all this whole month long, I'm following this Go Fish worship series put together originally by Andy Stanley, who is a mega church pastor down in Atlanta. I hope that you are enjoying my take on Andy Stanley's Go Fish series. But I've got to admit that when I first saw the title of this week's message, Fishing Buddies, I was a little reluctant to pick that one up. I thought, maybe, maybe we can just skip that one. We can do a shorter series or something. Here's why I was worried about that. I was afraid that with Fishing Buddies, what Andy Stanley would have us do, he'd say, okay, now open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, the place where Jesus sends out his followers, you know, in pairs, two by two, to proclaim the kingdom of God. And I assumed that what Andy Stanley would have to say about this was something like this. He would say, okay, now when you go out door to door, to hand out pamphlets and ask people if they know where they're going to spend eternity. You don't have to do that by yourself. No, no, no. Take somebody with you. Take a, a buddy with you when you go door to door. I really wasn't looking forward to preaching that sermon, in part because, well, I wasn't sure I could get any of you to do it. And in part because I didn't want to do it myself. You will be glad to know I was relieved to find out that's not, that's not what Andy Stanley means when he talks about fishing buddies. Here's what he says. Fishing for people is never intended by God as a solo activity, not just not by yourself, but not even just in pairs. He says fishing for people is something we're called to do in partnership. And you might wonder, well, in partnership with whom? Well, he says, we fish for people in partnership with the church. Huh? In fact, he says, that's what the church is really 
for. Now, he admits right up front, the church doesn't always make a very good fishing partner, right? Sometimes the church is not so much a buddy in our fishing for people. Sometimes it's a barrier. And he tells his own story. He says that as a, a youth, as a kid, I was just on fire for Jesus Christ. I just couldn't help myself. I told everybody that I knew about my love for Jesus Christ and that they could have love for Jesus Christ too. And he says, and then some of them started to believe me. And one of my friends said, okay, Andy, now that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior too, what should we do? Should we come to your church? And he was like a deer caught in the headlights. And he wanted to say, no, you know, no, anything. Don't come to my church. Because he was afraid that at his church, what his friends would experience would be judgment and exclusion. He was afraid that at his church, there would be people who would not approve of the way that his friends dressed or wore their hair or the kind of music that they like to listen to. And most of all, he was afraid that if his friends came to his church, they would be bored to death. And so for a while, he says, I secretly went around Atlanta visiting other churches so I'd have somewhere to invite my friends to. And finally said, I knew that wasn't the answer. And so he started working for a church so that he could help begin to form, to create the kind of church community that he wanted to invite his friends to. So the church is supposed to be our buddy, our partner in fishing for people, but we all know that sometimes it becomes a barrier. Instead of barrier, how, you might wonder. Well, we start with this. How many of you have ever had a bad experience with church? Any of you? Yeah, sometimes uh, we, we get disappointed by people. Sometimes we, we get our feelings hurt in the church. Sometimes we, we, don't, we feel left out of things we want to be a part of in, in the church. It's happened to me many times, and it is a barrier, isn't it? Sometimes, I think unintentionally, sometimes the church just isn't very welcoming. Years ago when I was in another church, a personal friend of mine started attending my church and he came three Sundays in a row and I thought we had reeled him in and then he told me, oh, you know, I think I'm going to join a different church. And I said, and he, I said, why? And he said, well, your church just isn't very friendly. And I said, what do you mean? We're friendly. Yeah, he said to each other, but I was there three Sundays in a row, and no one even acted like they cared. It's not intentional, but it is a barrier, isn't it? You know, sometimes it's hard to get into the groups and activities in a church. Uh, you know, Sunday school classes have a picnic, or their own members, huh? And, and ministry teams are desperate to, to get more people, more volunteers, but they don't tell people how they could sign up or help them to get signed up. And small groups are wonderful. You know, they, they pray for each other and care for each other. And then they don't take new members <laughs> and they don't split off and start new groups. It's not intentional, but it is a barrier, isn't it? And sometimes people feel like they're... they're there just isn't a place for them in a church. People feel like, well, there's just not a place for people who are multiply pierced and have tattoos all over their body in a church or in other churches. You know, I suppose people feel like there's not a place for me if I don't have tattoos all over my body. The, the, people wonder, is there a place for my non-traditional family in this church? Is there a place for my special needs children in this church? It, it's not intentional but it is a barrier isn't it so right off the start just like Andy Stanley I want to acknowledge that the church doesn't always get it right and we always need to be on the lookout we need to stay vigilant for ways that we are not as welcoming that we're not as good a fishing partner as we need to be but at the same time I also want to say this I, I want to say that at its best the church really is the, the best possible fishing partner there is. It is not an exaggeration for me to say that I am a Christian today because of the church, because of several 
churches. You know, I could also say, well, I'm a Christian today because I have searched the scriptures for myself and I find salvation in them. I could say, yes, I'm a Christian today because I, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But it's also true that I learned to search the scriptures, that I developed that relationship with Jesus because, first of all, starting with the old lady Sunday school teachers in the church where I grew up, some of them are still alive, so they weren't so old at the time, <laughs> were they? I learned to search the scriptures, and, and I, I developed my own relationship with Jesus Christ because I got to sing in the children's choir with my friends and because they let me sing in the adult choir when I was just still kind of a kid and I continued to sing in church choirs and we would go and we would sing in nursing homes and for shut-ins. I am a Christian today because... My mom made me hang out with quilting circles and with prayer meetings uh, and at funeral dinners. And I got to interact with the saints one-on-one -on, -one on an ongoing personal level. I'm a Christian today because even though they did not agree with me, the adults in my church would repeatedly give money so that I could go to summer camp and so that I could go on mission experiences. And maybe most of all, I'm a Christian today because I got to stay up all night long talking with other kids in the youth group on our camping trips and at our lock-ins. And then when I went off to college, and I might have, I might have just sort of slipped away from the faith I did not. Why? Well, because a friend down the hall in the dorm invited me to a Sunday evening fellowship meal and informal worship service across campus. And at that time, my dorm did not serve a meal on Sunday night. Well, a guy's got to eat, right? So I decided I would go along. And when I got there, well, I met Jack and I met Doug and Ann and I met Joanne, and, you know, even though I wasn't so wild about the informal worship service, I just kept going back because those people became so important to me. And because I kept going back to that fellowship meal, I just kept on believing in Jesus Christ, you know? When the, when the, with the right kind of church as our fishing buddy. You see, we can invite people who, who don't have any faith yet. We can invite people who used to have faith and are thinking about maybe trying to have faith again. We can invite people who are looking for a different kind of faith or a different expression of faith. We can invite them into a, a community that is so warm and welcoming, a, a place that is so forgiving and fun and affirming that even if they're not sure about Jesus yet, They'll just want to keep coming back because of the friendships, right? If you can get people into the right kind of loving community, all sorts of barriers to believing just eventually fade away. I think that's what happened in the early church in the reading from Acts chapter 2 that Carrie just shared with us. Uh, it says in Acts chapter 2 that that early church, those first believers, they shared their money and they shared their food so generously that not one person was hungry or in need in their community. It says that they spent lots and lots of time together. They prayed together and they studied the scriptures together. It says that they cooked for each other in each other's homes. You can tell that they were just glad to see each other. They enjoyed each other's company. I did a Bible study on this scripture from Acts chapter 2 one time at another church. Um, and I pointed out the difference between that early church, which it says grew. It grew every single day. And I compared that with the church I was part of, which barely ever grew at all. And one woman raised her hand. I said, yes. And she said, well, you know, of course that church grew. I said, what do you mean? She said, well... You know, if you're going to share that much, if you're going to spend that much time with each other, if you're going to spend time cooking for each other in each other's home, well, of course people are going to want to be part of that. And she stopped, and she looked at me, and then she looked down at her feet, and she said, but pastor, you're not expecting us to do that, are you? 
And I said, I was kind of hoping. I was kind of hoping that we might do that. I could tell you stories about the church getting it right. I could tell you stories about the church when it really is the best possible fishing buddy. I could tell you about the couple at the Maple Grove Church where I served. Uh, and in his, just in his 30s, the man suffered a series of really damaging strokes. And he had to go for periods of, of weeks at a time to a rehab center for physical therapy. Uh, and during that time, that church... Five days a week took turns picking up their son at school and getting him home. Every single day of the week, a member of the church would take meals and do shopping for that family so that she could just spend all of her time visiting her husband and not have to worry about all of that. That church took a collection so that they could pay the rent for that family for two or three months until disability kicked in. And later on, that couple had a very serious disagreement with the leadership and the the direction of the church they thought about leaving the church just they couldn't take it anymore and finally she came and she talked to me and she said you know we can't leave we just can't leave a church that has been so good to us that's the church as a fishing buddy, I could tell you about the Sunday evening a couple years ago when I just happened to be here at the time youth group was, was starting, and they invited me right out in the lobby to be part of their part of their opening prayer circle and just a little we we just started and just a little bit late Alvin Forte happened in the doors and and all of the youth and all of the advisors dropped everything they were doing and they gave him a standing ovation and they chanted his name Alvin 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 and Alvin came in and he joined the circle and just a little bit later here came C Caleb Sunderland also just a little bit well once again they dropped everything they were doing they gave him a standing ovation and chanted his name, Caleb, Caleb. I tell you what, I would believe, I would believe in the Jesus those kids are sharing. And even if I did not believe in their Jesus, I would come back to their meeting. Because I want a standing ovation too. That, that is the youth. Thank you, thank you. That, I, I'm telling you, that is, that is youth group. As fishing, but who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Where you get a standing ovation and your name chanted just for showing up late. Heck, I'm going, to sh I'm going to show up late too. I could tell you. I could tell you about Gina McFarland, who I think is not well enough to be back with us yet. Gina, are you here? Uh, she's the, the woman we baptized, and she became a member of our church just last month. And she came to Bethel International Church because every day she would drive, or every Monday, she would drive by to work and she would see our Micah Monday rally standing against racism out along Bethel Road. And as an African American, she told herself, well, you know, that church really seems to care. And they don't quit. They, they stay at it. They continue to care. So she started coming to this church, and then she wasn't here for a couple of weeks in a row, and somebody called her. Well, it turns out she had COVID, and she was pretty sick. Um, and so then the prayer team <laughs> started praying for her, and then she got a bunch of cards in the mail, and she texted me the other day, and she said, you know, Pastor, this church doesn't stop, does it? That's the church. That's the church. As a fishing buddy, that, I want to bring people into a community like that. And finally, I could tell you about Laura Schnabelin, who also became a kind of official, unofficial member of our church last, last month. And she told us her story, how she chose not to be confirmed in the Catholic church where she was raised because she found that some of their practices, some of their values were exclusionary. They were at odds with her understanding of Jesus Christ. And she said, and then, you know, as an adult, I attended several other churches from time to time, but always eventually I would experience the same kind of exclusionary values and practices, and I couldn't stay. And she said, but about 12 years ago, I came to this church, and I expected the same thing would happen. And it just never did. And now, she says, this church is willing to take a stand against its own denomination and its denomination's exclusionary practices. I want to be part of this community. See, that's the church 
as a fishing buddy, the kind of church that we want to invite our friends to be part of. One of my teachers, Doug Anderson, years ago put it this way. He said, the church's greatest witness to the world is the quality of our life together. Let me say it again. The church's greatest witness to the world out there is the quality of our life together in here. I think in her own way, I think that's what that woman at the Bible study was trying to say to me. She was trying to say, well, you know, if we're going to treat people like that, of course they're going to want to be part of what we're doing. When we fish for people, we get to partner with the church, which is that community where needs are met because of our sharing. It's that community where there's always a shoulder to cry on. It's that community where there are people to sing with and pray with and laugh with and cry with. It's that community where the holy meal is shared together over and over. The church's greatest witness is the quality of our life together. Now, I can hear some of your gears turning out there. I, I, I can anticipate what some of you are going to say to me next. Some of you are going to say, oh, that is such good news, Pastor, because if the quality of our life together here at the church is our greatest witness, well, then I'll just focus on the church, and I will leave all that fishing stuff to somebody else. You know what they call that? You know what they call that? It's an excuse. <laughs> that, that, that's just an excuse. Now, don't get me wrong. I am 100% on board with improving the quality of our life together, and I hope that you are as well. So, you know, if somebody has fallen through the cracks of our care, reach out to them for heaven's sakes. And if somebody's need is going unmet in our community, well, give more generously. Uh, absolutely. And if somebody is here on a Sunday morning and you see that they're not being uh, greeted and if they're not being made to feel welcome, well, you know what to do, right? Go and talk to them. Tell them your name. Find out what their name is. You know what to do. But, but to focus on the church to the exclusion of fishing for people is kind of like giving a party and forgetting to send out the invitations, right? You look around and you say, well, this would be a great party if only anybody was here. The church is not an end in itself. The church is our partner. The church is our buddy in fishing, in reaching out to other people who need God ever bit as much as we do. So, with the, with the church as our fishing buddy, in some cases, fishing for people really is very, very simple. It can come down to just three words. wonder if you can repeat them after me. Those three words are come and see. Try it. Come and see. See, it's a biblical phrase. It's from John chapter 1. And in John 1, a couple of guys come to Jesus and loosely translated, they say to him, Hey, Jesus, where are you hanging out? And guess what Jesus says to him? He says, Come and see. And they come and they hang out with him and they like it so well they hang out with him all day. One of them goes and gets his brother and he starts hanging out with Jesus as well. And the next day Jesus calls Philip to come and hang out with him. And Philip is so impressed that he goes and gets his friend Nathaniel and he tells Nathaniel about this guy he's found, this Jesus of Nazareth. Nathaniel is not so sure. Nathaniel says, oh, I don't know. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Guess what Philip says? He says, why don't you come and see? Now, I'm aware that at this point in John's gospel, the church is pretty tiny, you know. All of the followers of Jesus would fit at that point in the back of my minivan, and we could drive around Columbus together, you know. It's not very big. But here's the thing. Just by saying, come and see, they had gone from zero to five in two days which means that they had done more fishing in two days than sometimes our church has done in entire years. And they only said three words. All they said was, come and see. See, come and see is the gospel invitation. 
<laughs> it's almost that simple. So when your friends say to you, well, why are you all of a sudden talking about your church all the time? Why are you inviting me to your church so much now? Here's what you say. Are you ready? Say it with me. Come and see. Or if you invite one of your friends or a family member and they're a little skeptical, if they think, oh, I don't know, is there, will there be anybody like me there? Here's what you say. Come and see. If, they, if they're not so sure they want to go to your church, they say, oh, I don't know. Is the preaching boring? Is the music any good? Can I bring my gay friends with me? Would I be welcome even if I'm not really sure whether I believe or not? Here's what you say to them, right? You say, say it with me, come and see. You are not on your own in this work of fishing for, for people. Your, your fishing partner, your fishing buddy is the church. That community where needs are met by sharing with each other. That community where uh, there are people to sing with and pray with and laugh with. There's always a shoulder to cry on. There are people to learn with and grow and spend time with. And the holy meal is often shared together. The, the church's greatest witness to the world out there is the quality of our life together in here. And you can share it with just three words, <laughs> come and see. So every Sunday I've been giving you a little something to put in your Fishing for People tackle box. Remember we, we started uh, a few weeks ago and we put in there a uh, couple weeks ago our witness to Jesus. Remember uh, I asked you why is Jesus important to you? Why does Jesus matter to you? And you wrote down a few things. I hope that you've been practicing saying it out loud to yourself, maybe to your family. Uh, we're getting ready to be able to say that to other people. Hope that you have been praying for those three people whose names you wrote down on, on your sheet of paper that you are ready uh, to, you're thinking about inviting. Today I want to put in our Fishing for People tackle box, something very similar. It is our witness about the church. So if somebody asked you, hey, why do you go to church? What would you tell them? That's what I want you to write down. Why does the church make a difference in your life? Why is it important to you to be part of of the church. I'm going to invite you to write that down again, then practice saying it, share it with other people, pray about it in the context of those three people. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes to write down. You don't have to write down 10 things, just two things, three things. Uh, why is the church important to you? I'm going to give you a moment to do your writing. If you're at home, uh, any old piece of paper will do. If you're in person here, there's, there's cards uh, on your chairs and there's sanitized pens uh, around uh, just a couple of minutes, write down two or three things, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to share with you what I have written for the church right now. All right, you don't have to be done. You can finish that anytime. Uh, you can just keep writing and ignore what I say to you. That's all right. That, that's the work for today. Put that in your Fishing for People tackle box. Uh, practice it so that when you are the right person at the right time, you will know the right words 
to say. Here's what I wrote down this time. You know, the church is important to me because in hard times I know I'm not alone. And in good times I've got somebody to share the good news with. The church is important to me because there's people to sing with. Isn't that a blessing? And the church is important to me because somehow or other, whenever we get together, Jesus is always in the room. Amen. As we go to prayer, let's sing our theme song for the Go Fish series, Fishers of Men. Rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Peter, John, and James could never be the same. After they heard him say, I'll make you fishers of men. Rise and follow me, I'll make you worthy. Rise and follow me. Fishers of men. Please be seated. And now we'll light our candle of peace, justice, and inclusive love. This month, we're praying each Sunday for one of our neighborhood community schools. And this week, I have invited. Uh, the staff at Noble Academy to lead a prayer. Noble Academy is a char uh, community charter school. It's really just right across Bethel Road from us. If you go in the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot and keep going, uh, it's right back there. You may have driven past it a hundred times and not known it's there. We've hosted their graduation. Uh, we partnered with them from thing for some things. Uh, and by video, they will pray for us today. Good morning, Beth. I bring you greetings from Noble Academy Columbus, just across the street. Uh, my name is Reverend Joseph Stanley Jr., also known as just Mr. Stanley here at Noble. I have the privilege of serving as the operations manager, transportation coordinator, and the administrative assistant. I have been tasked this morning with bringing a prayer for our school. We're asking that you join with us in praying for our leadership, praying for our teachers, and praying for our enrollment and our safety for the upcoming school year. Join me in a moment of prayer. Eternal and all-wise God, we pause now in this moment, first acknowledging you for who you are, the God, the creator of heavens and the earth. God, we ask that in this moment now you provide a safe passage as we make our ways to schools. We ask that you provide our students and teachers safe passage as they make their way to and from school. Allow Noble to continue to be a safe harbor for all of our students. We pray for our enrollment next year. Let us continue to be a place that meets the needs of all of the children that come here. And it's in the name that only matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for having us this morning. And now will you join with me in our prayer for schools, followed by the Lord's Prayer. O oh God, for the students and schools of our community, our hearts go out. May every school be safe and accepting, and every classroom filled with learning and hope. Bless as well all who learn and teach at home. Raise up for us, Lord, a young generation of writers, scientists, and problem solvers, people of peace and doers of justice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God cheers for you. And when I finally see, God is glad for you. He sees, he knows, he loves. Ever present, always happen, I know you'll be. Alpha and Omega, my security, walking beside me. Sometimes you carry me, you knew my name before all time, and you'll be with me for eternity. And when I stumble down, God will reach for you. He sees, he knows, he loves. Ever present, always happen, I know you'll be. seated. We're not going to dismiss you row by row anymore. Just when it's time to go, just go. You know, every, we're, we return to normal in such small bits, don't we? Um, I want to remind you about the fishing for people graphic on the wall behind you. Uh, our goal is 75 invitations. They don't all have to show up, just 75 invitations made this month. I counted on the way in. There was 25 that in bad, but it leaves us 50 to go. Uh, so get busy, make your invitations. I hear tell a couple of people have made their invitations. Get your fish on the wall. If you're worshiping with us uh, on the live stream or by the video, uh, just go to the Bethel International Facebook page. Uh, there's a post pinned to the top of the page. Uh, and if you've invited somebody to worship either in person or online, just put your name in the chat. Uh, and we'll get the, uh, in the comments, we'll get your, your fish on the wall for you. Uh, so remember, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And if anybody asks you, 
Oh, I don't know. Is the preaching any good? Does the music suck? Would, would my family be welcome there? You remember what you say? Three words. Say it with me. Come and see. May it be so.